In this final presentation in my sampling distribution series, I'm going to talk about the sampling distribution of the sample proportion p hat. In statistical inference, p hat is the estimator for the population proportion p, which is basically the percentage of things of interest. In the absence of population data, we're confined to the use of samples to make inference. And so p hat calculates the number of items of interest out of a sample that you collect x divided by n, where x is the number of items of interest generically referred to as the number of successes and n is the sample size or the number of trials of a certain experiment. To be sure, success here doesn't necessarily mean a, 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 a bad, a good thing. It could is it just sim simply refers to what it is that you're interested in learning about and it could be, for example, the number of uh, uh, female executives in a certain industry, the number of likely voters supporting a certain candidate or initiative, the number of defective items in a shipment, uh, as in this example. And so P hat calculates the proportion of, in this example, defective items in the shipment or the proportion of voters supporting a referendum, the proportion of female executives in a certain industry, etc. So as it is, x is going to be a binomial variable because it's measuring the number of successes when you conduct the experiment. It's looking in this example for defective parts in the shipment. And as a binomial variable, it follows the binomial distribution. As you know, the binomial dis distribution is one that governs the behavior of a variable x that follows what's called a Bernoulli process. The Bernoulli process is a process of success and failure and so if you're interested it's binary in nature that is and the outcomes are mutually exclusive because you can't have as I show in this illustration success and failure occurring at the same time. And so if you're interested in catching the number of successes then um, it's just going to be uh, it's, it, that's going to be mutually uh, exclusive from observing a failure. Anyhow, the mean of the binomial variable x is going to be n times p, where n is the sample size and p is the probability of success, as it were. And the standard deviation is going to be the square root of npq, where q is 1 minus p. Bear in mind, if you get rid of this radical sign, you are calculating the variance of the binomial variable x. So by its nature, variable x is a discrete variable and the distribution, the binomial distribution is a discrete probability distribution. Since p hat is equal to x divided by n, as in this example, you take a sample of 100 and you find that 18, are 18 parts are defective, p hat comes out to be 18. So as you can see here, the distribution of x which is the number of successes is going to affect the, the behavior or if you like the distribution of p hat. Since n, the sample size is constant in repeated samples, but x, the number of successes, can change from trial to trial. So let's learn a little bit more about the characteristics therefore of this p hat, which is the percentage value. And we conclude here that since x is a binomial random variable, the sampling distribution of p hat is also going to be based on the binomial distribution. We shouldn't be surprised about that, right? And like the binomial variable x, the number of successes, the proportion of successes, if you like, is going to be a discrete random variable. And you might say, oh, wait a minute, isn't p hat a decimal value and how can that be discrete? Yes, it can. While it is true that any variable with whole number outcomes uh, is by nature a discrete variable, there are some variables that take on decimal values that can also be discrete insofar as those outcomes are countable. For example, if we took out a sample size of 5, p hat could be 0 out of 5 or 1 out of 5, 2 out of 5, all the way to 5 out of 5. The possible values of p hat ranges for from 0 to 1. There's no other possible value, so the outcomes of p hat are countable, and as a result, it is a discrete random variable. We say that p hat takes on one of n plus 1 possible values. n is the sample size, in this case 5, plus 1 is 6. And if you count this, we have 6 likely outcomes. So now, 
let's cut to the chase because according to the central limit theorem, my good old friend, in large samples the distribution of p-hats can be approximated with the normal distribution and the mean of p-hats is going to be equal to the population proportion p and the standard deviation of p-hats is going to be the square root of p-q over n and again q is 1 minus p and you might say well how large does the sample have to be for us to use normal approximation well check this out if the population proportion is close to 0.5 then really the sample size doesn't have to be very large for us to utilize a normal approximation. As in the case of the, a fair coin, I mean the likely the probability of observing a head, regardless of how many number of times you flip that coin, is also is always going to be 0.5. So we know we don't have to flip that coin so many number of times to approximate the normal distribution for or the sample proportion. But on the other hand, if the population proportion is close to either 0 or 1, these extreme probability values, then we're probably going to need a large sample size to get that approximation going, as I illustrate right here. Here, this is a sample of 25, a population with a probability of, uh, of success of 0.5. And as you can see already, this is beginning to look pretty, like the normal curve. We, if we kick up the sample size to 100, it retains the bell-shaped figure and it looks even prettier. It looks smoother and it looks tighter around the mean. So regardless, the larger the sample, the better, at least to ensure that your distribution is tighter and will give you outcomes that would be close to the mean. Now though, but compare that to this case, the same sample size here, population uh, proportion is 0.04 quite close to 0 here it's 0.96 quite close to 1 and look over here they look nothing close to the normal curve we would need to kick up the sample size quite a bit as I show here to so 800 for this guy and 800 for this guy to begin to enjoy the beauty of the normal distribution so in general going back here as a rule of thumb we can assume normal distribution if NP as well as n times q are both greater than 10. Bear in mind that n p is the expected number of successes, which is the mean of the binomial variable x, and n q is the expected number of failures, where q again is 1 minus p. So that's our rule of thumb. All right, so let's check out a quick example. So you can pause this and read this up a little bit, but here a population has. Uh, the population proportion is 0.18 and we're going to take a sample of 200 parts and we want to calculate the probability that the sample proportion is less than 20 percent. As we learned, um, we're going to uh, go through the process of identifying the attributes of this problem. First is what's the expected number of defective parts, which is aka the expected number of successes. All right, And the definition is, is n times p, which comes out to be 36. Next up, expected number of failures, which would be non-defective parts. It's n times q, and that comes out to be 164. And this question says, is the sampling distribution of p-hats approximately normal? And the answer is certainly yes, because by appeal to the central limit theorem, both np and nq are going to be more than 10, you know, as uh, you have already seen here. And so it satisfies our rule of thumb. The mean of the sampling distribution of p-hats, it's going to be the population proportion of 0.18, and the standard error is going to come out to be 2.72%. So now, if we want to calculate the probability that sample proportion is less than 0.2, remember the steps. First, draw the normal curve and shade the regions. We've done it, looking pretty. And remember, one half of the region is 0.5, the other half is 0.5. So the area to calculate is the shaded region because we're looking for 0.2 and below. So 0.2 is somewhere right here since the mean is 0.18. So for, from here, going backwards. Step two, we calculate z and find probability. This is the definition of z for the sample proportion, and it comes out to be 0.74 and we then find the corresponding probability to be 0.27. Keep in mind, this 0.27 is the probability value corresponding to the space between p hat of 0.2 and p 
of 0.18 so it's actually this space right here and that's why I put this guy right here and I'm sure you know how to go to the Z table and look it up and you're gonna see something like this so that's 0.27 this this is 0.2 right here 27 that's actually hang on a second let's be sure where we're this is gonna be 0.74 I beg your pardon so 0.74 that's uh, let's go right here 0.74 that's it and that's the probability value of 0.27 which I noted right here. However, a quicker and probably nicer way to do so is to use the uh, Excel function, the norm.dist function. And here's uh, the function that we're going to utilize. Let's go to Excel real quick and hook it up. That's it right here. So first, I define my input data right there. And to calculate probability that p hat is less than 0.2, I can come out here. That's your, che that's your cheat sheet right there. All right, so equal. Um, hit norm dot this already it pops it up so I'm just gonna double click it right there and then it's it gives me the prompts here but I'm gonna look at my cheat sheet the first item here is p hat so click on this comma next item population mean which is the population proportion click that comma standard error which is this guy right here comma and then when you want to click the true criteria you don't want to click the false criteria for nothing all right close it and voila if you want to calculate the residual region, you know, which would be the probability that the uh, that uh, p hat is greater than 0.2, you can simply subtract this value from 1 or you can directly calculate it. But bear in mind that the Excel function, this function right here, gives you cumulative probability from the left to a certain point over here. So it's going to give you from here to here. It, it doesn't give you beyond uh, uh, areas that are beyond. All right. So to do so, we're going to execute one minus the cumulative probability, and that's how I got this guy right here. So that's going to be equal one minus. Then you type in your norm dist. All right. That's it right there. Uh, type, double click it, and then you do the same thing. Your p hat is this. Your uh, population proportion is that, and your standard error is this. And um, double click the true criterion. So it's going to be, it's going to be one minus it. You click enter, and that's what you have. And that's all she wrote. Hope you enjoyed it. Let's keep learning.